So how do OLEDs uh, compare with respect to this uh, liquid crystal based uh, display? And you'll see a lot of information out there on the internet. Companies which uh, make uh, OLEDs, they will tout, you know, that OLEDs have a much richer uh, color gamut. Black is really black. Companies which make LCD will say, you know, look how bright we are, how uh, how nice the colors on our LCD display are. So now that we have some understanding of how these things work, you know, let's try to do a fair uh, technical analysis of um, uh, OLEDs versus uh, LCDs. So let's start with, you know, in areas which are where the OLED uh, fares better as compared to LCD. So one thing about OLEDs is that you can make them uh, very thin. You can uh, make these OLEDs display for less than uh, 0.3 uh, micron or less than 300 nanometer in thickness because essentially they only have these uh, two layers and you can lay these layers uh, on a flexible substrate. So that's another advantage of these uh, OLED based display that you can um, make them on flexible substrate and you know there are always these uh, sci-fi applications like uh, you know you can make uh, uh, newspapers out of these OLED based display and uh, so on and another thing which I mentioned earlier is that since you have uh, uh, these OLED based uh, displays they have these light source uh, at the very top and this light does not have to pass through uh, many layers you can uh, have a much larger viewing angle so you can uh, look at these uh, displays uh, from over here or you can look at these display from over here and they will still uh, provide you a large uh, contrast as compared to your LCD based display where your contrast uh, falls uh, very rapidly as a function of your uh, viewing angle. So that's uh, you know three things uh, in uh, favor of my uh, OLED uh, based uh, display. Another thing is that these uh, OLED based display they uh, have a very high contrast. So OLED based display they can easily achieve contrast of you know hundred thousand to one. Uh, versus uh, uh, LCD which you know only achieves a contrast uh, of a uh, maximum of around 1000 to 1 and that comes from the fact that LCD the they have problem uh, uh, turning the light off and the black is uh, never really black but over here the way you generate black is you essentially turn off uh, these uh, red uh, green and blue pixels so you have no light coming out and black is uh, really black so that is uh, one of the thing you will uh, see companies uh, touting about that you know the black is really black uh, with the OLED uh, based uh, displays another thing is that you know you uh, since these are based on uh, light emitting diodes and light emitting diodes have a much uh, faster response time and you can uh, switch uh, uh, any of these things up, up uh, in uh, 0 0.01 uh, millisecond that gives you a frequency of switching frequency of up to 10 to power uh, 5 hertz versus as compared to a LCD based display you it takes you know at least a couple of uh, milliseconds to uh, turn uh, uh, liquid crystal uh, change the polarization of the liquid uh, crystal and that limits your frequency to you know less than uh, 500 hertz and we'll see you know some of the gaming application especially when you want to do 3d you really need your uh, switching frequency really starts to approach uh, this limit so uh, OLED based display have a much larger headroom to increase their uh, increase their uh, switching uh, frequency or they have a much faster uh, response uh, time another thing that you will hear very often is that they have a much larger uh, color uh, gamut so a color gamut uh, that you get from these uh, um, uh, OLED based display is often much larger than the standard uh, which is out there so the standard color uh, uh, gamut that these displays are supposed to achieve is this uh, sRGB gamut and uh, OLED based display many times they uh, even exceed or do much better than that 
on the L LCD side we saw that this uh, color always uh, comes at a compromise uh, with your brightness because you need to use a, you need to use stronger uh, color filter so there's always this color versus uh, brightness uh, trade-off but since these uh, light emitting diodes based display they are generating colors directly instead of uh, using a color filter you uh, tend to get a larger uh, color gamut with these uh, display so all right we have talked about uh, all uh, these uh, pros but certainly you know there must be some some disadvantage of these uh, display or there must be something which must be limiting uh, these uh, OLED based display. Otherwise, you know, we won't be having this conversation and everybody would be using uh, OLED based uh, displays. So one of the things that uh, is, again, most of these are technological limitations. These are not uh, fundamental limitations to the uh, to the to the OLEDs, but uh, you know, at the current uh, uh, status, that is, you know, speaking as of uh, November uh, 2012, these OLED-based display they tend to have uh, less brightness or lower brightness as compared to LCD-based display. You can uh, at maximum uh, currently you can buy an OLED-based display. It, uh, its brightness would be you know somewhere around uh, 300 uh, candle. Up Per meter square uh, you can easily buy uh, LCD based displays which have a brightness of uh, over a thousand candela based uh, meter square and that comes from the fact that so far these uh, light emitting diodes uh, these organic light emitting diodes especially they have efficiencies uh, which are uh, you know for your uh, for your uh, green and sorry for your let me write in the proper color so for your uh, red and your uh, green the efficiency of these leds has been you know somewhere around uh, 15 to uh, 20 uh, percent uh, the blue has been you know really a weak point and its efficiency has been between four to six percent and so the overall uh, efficiencies of these uh, organic light emitting diodes they limit the brightness uh, so far of uh, these uh, display Another thing, again, it comes from the uh, or use of these organic uh, molecules for making uh, light emitting diodes. So these displays, uh, they uh, uh, they say they degrade uh, over time, and especially your blue LED, which is a weak point uh, uh, it degrades uh, much uh, faster and uh, that uh, so your brightness overall brightness of your display degrades uh, over uh, time um, uh, so far uh, the resolution of these uh, displays has been uh, less as compared to OLEDs as well the best uh, as compared to LCDs as well the best uh, OLED display that you can buy uh, currently in the market will have a resolution of around uh, 300 uh, pixel uh, per inch. You can easily buy uh, LCD based display which have resolution of uh, over uh, you know 325 or uh, or even higher uh, pixel per inch. So uh, the resolution is another uh, sticking point. Um, and let me draw a line over here since we are getting crowded and let me draw a dotted line which goes like uh, this. So another, you know, one of the other limitations of these uh, OLED uh, based uh, displays is that uh, uh, so far they have been available only in uh, small uh, sizes uh, the most common application you see them are in these uh, uh, smartphones especially all the smartphones that uh, Samsung's made if you buy TVs or you know if you buy uh, HD TVs uh, uh, made of these uh, OLED display they cost at least you know more than uh, three or four uh, grand and uh, as compared to lcd tvs you can easily buy the same tv for less than uh, 500 dollars so they are available in small sizes and also they cost uh, a lot more uh, money so these are some of the limitations uh, so far and uh, to understand at least uh, some of these uh, limitations, we can understand by looking at uh, how these displays uh, are uh, made. So let's look at uh, this uh, limitation first. So what limits uh, the resolution of our OLED based display to you know less than uh, 300 uh, pixel per inch? So to understand that, let's look at how these uh, displays uh, are uh, made. So uh, OLED based display. 
it's a very simple uh, manufacturing process because there are only a few layers that you need to uh, put down so the first thing you do is you start with a glass substrate or you can start uh, with either a glass or you can start with a flexible uh, substrate you of course uh, clean it and you know pre-treat your uh, surface then what you do is you deposit these uh, you know your cathode you deposit your whole transport layer and then the most important thing and that's what limits so resolution is you deposit these RGB layers so you deposit this uh, uh, you deposit this uh, red layer you deposit these uh, blue layers and these have to be placed right next to each other because they that's how you generate an individual pixel and uh, that limits your resolution as we will uh, just see so the next step you do is essentially you deposit these uh, uh, your cathode, your uh, electron transport layer, your whole transport layer and the final thing you do is you once you have deposited this layer you uh, encapsulate your uh, display especially these uh, organic based LEDs they degrade uh, uh, very fast if you expose them to any uh, moisture or atmosphere so you seal these uh, displays uh, off using different uh, techniques and you encapsulate it so that it's no longer exposed to uh, atmosphere and the technique that is currently used to uh, make uh, these uh, RGB layers is is a technique called uh, finite uh, metal uh, mask or called uh, FMM uh, which stands for a uh, finite uh, metal mask and it's a very fancy word for a very simple technique which is essentially very similar to if you have worked in a lab and use a shadow mask so it's the same technique as uh, using a shadow mask so the way this works is that you have you know one mask for your uh, your uh, red layer you have another mask for your uh, green layer and you have uh, yet another mask for your uh, blue layer and you uh, you have these uh, source of so this source would be you know containing your uh, your organic layer which uh, generates uh, the color and you evaporate this uh, source and you uh, filter this through this mask on and so you place this mask and this uh, uh, red material only passes through the area which is uh, you know open uh, on this mask and then you deposit your uh, red dye and then you uh, you know use another mask and you use uh, you uh, expose the area right next to this uh, red molecule and you deposit your green uh, dye over there and then you do the same thing with your uh, blue dye and you get these uh, three layers which are you know placed uh, adjacent uh, to each other so you know it, it's a simple process but it wastes uh, first of all um, it wastes uh, it, it results in a lot of material waste so think about you know you are uh, using this fine mass to uh, deposit this material but you're depositing that material everywhere else on the mass too so it results in a lot of waste of these materials and these materials are not necessarily uh, always uh, cheap and the other thing is that since you're using this uh, shadow mask or this uh, metal mask based process that really limits your resolution because you are depositing these different layers and many times these uh, dyes are not even uh, in uh, in exactly a solid place they like to you know spread out so and also there's a limit to how far you know how close you can place these uh, different layers because uh, the, since you're using a shadow mass process there's, uh, it's, there's no good way to control this resolution uh, very easily and that limits your overall uh, resolution to you know somewhere between around uh, 15 micron and that limits your overall uh, pixel density to less than uh, 300 uh, pixel uh, per inch so so it's uh, it comes from the way that how these masks uh, are uh, manufactured so people obviously have been you know there are smart people working in this field they have been looking at uh, other ways you can uh, deposit uh, these uh, materials so the uh, most uh, promising uh, technique so far uh, which uh, looks like to replace that uh, uh, finite uh, metal mask is this technique called uh, LITI or uh, which stands for laser induced uh, thermal uh, imaging so in this case you start with the dye 
and you have this dye on a donor uh, wafer and then you uh, you essentially apply a laser and you scan this uh, laser uh, over the regions where you want to print that uh, red uh, pixel and uh, uh, shown here is how that layer is uh, transferred so you have this donor film which contains this uh, red layer and then apply I apply this laser which uh, causes heat which in turn also causes a uh, volume expansion and uh, as a result of that that this layer is now transferred from this uh, donor layer to this substrate and I'm left with this uh, uh, red uh, layer uh, on my uh, substrate and this is one of the most, uh, you know, um, uh, promising technique uh, that, uh, you know, companies like Samsung have been looking to, you know, replace uh, this uh, finite metal mask. But this is not the only, uh, you know, the only uh, technique uh, out there. People also have been, uh, they realize, you know, that there are limitations to these uh, laser based uh, techniques. So they are also looking at non laser based uh, patterning uh, techniques. And again, you see a lot of, uh, uh, things that uh, you might know from used in other process technology. So you see things like lithography that of course can give you a very nice uh, resolution, but it, it comes at the cost that uh, that you you uh, it comes at uh, increasing uh, cost and it also you have to figure out how to uh, you know pattern these uh, different layers. The other technique uh, which is uh, also being explored uh, and can give you again very uh, cheap, uh, uh, very uh, low cost uh, and very high uh, throughput and also can be applied to a flexible substrate is a uh, roll printing where you essentially just use a drum and you uh, print them uh, on uh, onto a flexible substrate but again limit, uh, resolution might not be as good. People have also been looking at uh, things like uh, inkjet printing similar to you how you print uh, you know a color uh, paper uh, using an inkjet uh, printer so you just print uh, where you uh, want them and again this can achieve reasonable uh, resolution but at the same time it has low cycle time so it has uh, low throughput but all these things are being uh, explored.